A devastating fire destroys a historic building in downtown Liguorian and the community rallies to help those displaced by the fire. 150 runners and walkers started off 2022 by taking part in the resolution run on the morning of New Year's Day. Orion Township dignitaries and staff came together to celebrate the official grand opening of the brand new municipal complex on Jocelyn Road. And the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce recognized board members, ambassadors, and business leaders during their annual Impact Awards luncheon. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Over the past two decades, downtown Liguorian has seen its share of devastating fires, including the school administration building in 1997, the Lake Orion Pet Center fire in 2017, and the Sagebrush Cantina fire in 2004 that wiped out several businesses. Sadly, another historic building has been tragically lost. On the afternoon of Friday, January 14th, the Orion Township Fire Department responded to a call of a major fire in downtown Liguorian. Firefighters arrived to find smoke and flames coming from a two-story, nine-unit apartment building located at 35 North Broadway between Motor City Granite and the Fork and Pint restaurant. Smoke detectors alerted residents to the danger and all were evacuated safely. The historic building, however, suffered major damage and may be a total loss. Unfortunately, the house was built in 1894 and somewhere between basically in the 1880s and 1930s, they did something called balloon construction. It's no longer used anymore, but basically balloon construction is, um, if you look at houses, um, it's basically long continuous studs creating uh, basically hundreds of perfect, like um, unobstructed passages for the fire to spread. Um, because they don't have, the houses aren't built that way anymore. Uh, so they have fire stops and fire breaks. So if you look at that house, you can tell when the windows are very narrow and on top of each other, that's basically a key that's balloon construction. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, I would say it's kind of a total loss. Um, obviously, the insurance adjusters are out there and, you know, working with the prevention division to really make a guesstimate in terms of um, whether they'll rebuild or tear it down and start from the beginning. The Orion Township Fire Department battled the blaze for approximately five hours and was aided by Oxford, Addison, and Oakland Township Fire Departments. Despite challenges due to the frigid temperatures, they managed to prevent any serious damage to neighboring businesses. Nothing to Fork and Pint. There might have been a little smoke damage to the granite store to the south. You know, the interesting thing is I'm impressed with just because the weather was bad. It was cold outside, uh, so we fought the elements. Um, but there was really only about a 12-foot spacing between the structure fire and the two buildings on the north and south of it. So um, it's pretty remarkable that we kept it confined to where it was at. And I think if anything, just a little bit of smoke damage um, to the granite store. The investigation is currently ongoing to determine the cause of the fire. Meanwhile, two weeks later, the Lake Warren community came together to help those who lost their homes due to the fire. On Saturday, January 29th, the American Legion Post 233 opened their doors for a fundraiser benefiting the seven individuals who lost everything in the fire. Beginning at 2 p.m., visitors were encouraged to stop by to make a cash donation and to take part in a raffle for baskets of goodies donated by local businesses. Our community, our community of Lake Orion and surrounding, are coming together to help um, some folks that just went through a, um, a big life shakeup. Uh, we had the fire downtown, which many, most of you are aware of just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we had seven residents displaced. Uh, and these residents are uh, uh, our community. They're our family and they needed help. So today uh, is the, uh, the, the day to, to kick in, to help. The community came together, donated tons of food, tons of auction items. And now we're gonna raise some money and we're gonna put it in these guys' pockets so they can get on their feet. Visitors enjoyed food and drinks and bands performed throughout the day. The fundraiser is yet another example of Lake Warren residents coming together to help their friends and neighbors in need. We are members of the community and we as a community, as a big family, have to take care of each other. And we had some veterans who were in the, in the, the, the problem that we had, the burn, the whole thing. 
and we just decided we're going to help them out and we're also going to help the other folks. And we stood up and we did it and the, I was so impressed by the folks in, in the town, in the village, the restaurants and the folks that just came about, clothing and just places to live and they, they gave them these meals and the whole thing. But I'm just, I'm just, we're all a family, we're all a community. This is what we do. It's a, truly amazing to me. I moved here 33 years ago because of the way that people give and the way they care and share and it still happens today. And it's unmatchable anywhere. I've had so many people say to me how unique it is to live here. So many people uh, that just, their neighbor is their friend, their family. That's what we do here. The Lake Orion DDA's director, Molly Lalone, told us a little more about the boarding house that was destroyed by the fire. That was a, an historic home, and they recently did um, some renovations to that property. The um, property owner did the renovations himself as much as he could. Um, he had a beautiful shake cedar um, siding, and, and it's lost now. That's not going to be, I don't think that's recoverable. Um, but we, you know, uh, the first responders, they came here so quickly and they were so thorough. Um, in a downtown situation, we always have buildings real close to each other. And that was a situation where we could potentially have lost two other businesses or more, and we did not. Um, so I want to make sure that I say thank you to those first responders for taking care of the properties. If you weren't able to attend the fundraiser but would like to make a donation to help those displaced by the fire, you can visit PNC Bank located at 88 West Flint Street near M24. Orion Township offices has been located at 2525 Jocelyn Road since 1974, with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office opening a substation in 1997. Over the past few years, the township board and staff members agreed they were in desperate need of a new facility, and now they have reason to celebrate. ONTV's Joe Johnson reports from the grand opening of the municipal complex. On the evening of Tuesday, February 1st, Orion Township dignitaries, staff, and members of the community gathered together to celebrate the official grand opening of the brand new municipal complex. Located at 2323 Joslin Road near West Scripps Road, the 53,000 square foot complex houses Orion Township offices, as well as the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, Orion Township substation. Visitors were led on a guided tour of the facility and Township Supervisor Chris Barnett hosted a ceremony in the boardroom. After recognizing those who helped make this amazing complex a reality, dignitaries lined up for a ribbon cutting ceremony. Three, two, one. We had a lot of people that didn't think we could do this before COVID. And then COVID happened and we were right in the middle of it and we just said, we're going, we're doing it. And it was the best decision we could have made because now it's, 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 construction is going to be difficult to do anytime now. Um, so I'm very relieved, grateful to be here. Uh, we had an amazing team, uh, starting with our architects from Auger Klein Aller, Scott Reynolds, who everyone knows locally, uh, is an architect, but they were the low bidder, so they did it in the right way and um, did a phenomenal job. We worked with them on other projects um, and the whole team there. And then a construction management, excuse me, the construction management team can't say enough great stuff about Cunningham Limp. They were incredible um, advocates for us. They worked really hard and we wouldn't be here again today without that amazing team. Township officials broke ground on this very spot in September of 2020. Board members insisted that taxpayers would not foot the bill on a new township hall so officials had to rely on creative revenue streams to fund the $18 million project. The best thing about this is the board was really adamant we didn't want to raise taxes in order to build this building, and we found a creative way to fund it through our revenue, through the landfill, and through the marijuana licenses that we have here. So we literally are 100% paying for this building with those two revenue streams. So we're not, we, we would have had, otherwise we would have had to raise taxes. So uh, it's great news for our residents. In addition to the new Township Hall, the Oakland County Sheriff's Office has a brand new facility of their own. The department moved into the old Township Hall in 1997, where deputies had to function in less than ideal working conditions. Sheriff Michael Bouchard expressed his gratitude to the community for allowing this day to happen. Uh, appreciation to the community for the support of the project, uh, you know, for our team 
having facilities that are really up to the task and state of the art means a great deal. I mean, you come to work every day, and they come to work with pride. They're excited to work in Orion, but the building that they used to go to wasn't uh, kind of the cherry on top of the ice cream. You know, they'd show up and it'd be, okay, let's try to make this facility work and then go out and do great things. Now they come to a facility they're proud of. It's state of the art, and it's in line with the community they're excited to serve. So it's really kind of a blessing, I think, for our team to have a place they not only love to come to work, but a community they love to serve. Lieutenant Dan Toth, who retired in October of 2021, remembers working out of the former substation that was located on M24 before moving to Orion Township Hall in 1997. When I first started here, it was a Quonset hut, okay, and that was the old Parks and Rec building, and I remember that when I first walked in, I mean, even as a young deputy, they had pieces of tin on the floor, and they had old license plates that covered up some of the holes, and I had worked in some other substations that were not very well suited. But I says, what, what's that? Well, there's holes in it, and right now that's just how we're patching the holes. So, you know, time marches on, and uh, future generations will look back and say, what a, this is the exact center of Orient Township, where we're standing right here, and it's a beautiful spot. The property, it was just, it all came together, and, uh, you know, people will appreciate it uh, in years to come, so. Orion Township is currently accepting bids to demolish the former township hall just up the road from the new location. Supervisor Barnett told us the property will become part of the municipal park and may be the future site of sports fields or volleyball courts. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Each year, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce hosts the Impact Awards to recognize community leaders. The luncheon had been disrupted two years in a row due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2021 ceremony was supposed to take place in December, but was rescheduled due to the tragedy that took place at Oxford High School on November 30th. On Thursday, January 6th, the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual Impact Awards luncheon at Paint Creek Country Club in Lake Orion. Attendees enjoyed a buffet lunch and the chamber recognized its ambassadors, board members and staff and named its Impact Award recipients from 2021. The luncheon was sponsored by Michigan United Credit Union. The Impact Awards is the chance for the Chamber of Commerce to honor those in our community that have gone above and beyond to make Lake Orion a, a better place to live for everyone here. Uh, our ambassadors, our board members, and our staff really work behind the scenes throughout the year to make sure that we have um, a cohesive unit and, and help support the staff and, and the work of the Chamber of Commerce. And this is our time to formally recognize their achievements, their dedication, and their, and their volunteer spirit. The Chamber recognized five people with an impact award. The Youth Impact Award was presented to Tanya Hamilton of the North Oakland Community Coalition. The award was sponsored by Cunellis Agency, Farm Bureau Insurance. I am overwhelmed with gratitude to be receiving this year's Youth Impact Award from the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce. When Noel called me with the news, I have to admit I was a little hesitant. We have so many wonderful, worthy, youth-serving individuals in Orion, and I'm just simply one of the lucky people who get to work alongside them every day. However, on behalf of the coalition, I thank you for seeing the value in the work we do in prevention. Our coalition is not a staff or a board of directors or any one person. Our coalition is all of the sectors of our community uniting in the activity of protecting our youth and building for them a community that gives them the very best opportunity to reach their goals. The Community Beautification Award, sponsored by Redwood Lake Orient, went to DeHaan Orthodontics. Dr. Andrew DeHaan was there to accept the award. We are honored this year to receive the Community Beautification Award, and thank you for the nomination and support. Our goal in developing the property across from Friendship Park was to further cement our presence in the Lake Orion community. We are thrilled with how our new office fits into your community, and we're so glad to hear that you feel the same way. It's a beautiful building. I am a second generation orthodontist here in Lake Orion. My aunt, Dr. Deborah DeHaan, built the practice in our previous location at Baldwin and Walden. In fact, that's where I got my orthodontic treatment in the 90s. 
In 2012, I was very lucky to join the practice and continue the tradition of quality care. As the Orient community welcomed me with open arms, I found the relationships and smiles we made were continuing to grow along with the practice. We wanted to stay in this amazing community, and after standing in an empty field across from Friendship Park, it became apparent that we could all benefit from a new development here. The Economic Impact Award, sponsored by Consumers Energy, went to the Boutros Companies, accepting the award was Tom Boutros. We at the Boutros Companies have been in the community for numerous years. We are owners of two shopping centers in the area, uh, one being the uh, Kroger Center at Lapeer and Indian Wood Road. And also we have been the owners since 2014 of the former, what's gonna be the former Kmart Center at Lapeer and Clarkston Roads. Um, as most of you are aware, that former Kmart facility will be, coming, will be becoming a new mire, uh, 90,000 square feet, grocery only. Uh, it will be a, a brand new concept store for Meyer, and it will be the first one in Michigan. Named 2021's Entrepreneur of the Year was Becky Pastor of the Wooden Tulip. The award was sponsored by Capricor Professional Advisors. I am thrilled and honored to be recognized as this year's Entrepreneur of the Year. With only being in business for a short period and during a very difficult and challenging time, this is a huge honor for me. Helping others express themselves through fashion is something I love to do. It is an awesome feeling hearing a customer say she feels beautiful in her outfit or someone telling me that they feel confident stepping out of their comfort zone and trying styles they've never thought they could pull off. The Wooden Tulip Boutique did not get where it is today without the tremendous support of the wonderful Lake Orion and surrounding communities. You all have recognized the importance to stay true to small businesses by shopping small and keeping it local. And for this, I'm extremely grateful and appreciative. And named 2021's Business Person of the Year was Wayne Haney of Haney Farm Bureau Insurance. Sponsoring the award was Colin Buick GMC. Our Chamber Director, Noelle Champagne, called me to let me know the Chamber was naming me the Business Person of the Year. Noelle managed to pull off something few people can. She left me utterly speechless. I still don't have the words to properly thank you for this honor. I've been working in the Oregon area for the past few years, but it's only been in the last two or so that my family has really started to put down roots. Our home is here now. Our business office is nestled right here in the heart of downtown, and all our extended family and friends know that we think of Oregon as home. Along the way, so many people have opened their homes, hearts, businesses, and lives to us. It's just been a very humbling experience to see the love and warmth that radiates from our community. At the center of this has been, in particular, the business community in downtown Lake Orion, the incredible people of Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary, and the supportive crew and members of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce. I don't think I can say enough about Wayne. Wayne is truly um, a passionate and dedicated individual and really works hard to make sure that the communities that he's part of um, thrive. He's a Rotarian, um, he works with BNI groups, he's a member of our board of directors, and um, all of that besides doing his day-to-day -day job. And he really shows his passion and commitment to his customers, so um, we know that uh, Wayne is an excellent choice for this award. Most people welcome the arrival of a new year by pledging to better themselves or take on new challenges. Dozens of people challenge themselves to start the new year on the right foot by taking part in a 5K. On the morning of New Year's Day 2022, approximately 150 runners and walkers gathered in downtown Lake Orion for the start of the New Year's Resolution Run 5K. Organized by Hanson's Running Shop, the starting line was set up on La Pierce Street near Flint Street and at 10 a.m. the race was underway. Runners, you're back. The annual event celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2020, but was canceled in 2021 due to the COVID pandemic. Organizers and participants were happy to see it return in 2022. Have this going again, see everyone come out for it. Oh man, it's great. Um, you know, when you have a tradition like this in Lake Orion and you have to take a year off, uh, it's not till you miss a year that you really 
understand what you're missing. So uh, having that year off, you know, we, we miss the, the 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 usuals that would dress in costumes. We miss the the happy, saying happy new year to the uh, the people that attend this every year. Um, so, uh, you know, Lake Orion is such a great community that we get a lot of the regulars out, not only in the running community, but also the Lake Orion community. So it, it means a lot to see everyone New Year's Day because we've been doing it for so long um, that, uh, you know, it's special to have this back. The weather was fairly pleasant as participants completed two laps through the streets of the village to run the full 5K route. The finish line was set up Broadway Street where all participants received a medal. Crossing the finish line first was Axel Rose, who was part of a group of longtime friends who show up for the race every year dressed in crazy costumes. This year's theme was 80s rockers. Axel finished the course with a time of 1706.9. Well, we were a group of high school friends from Lake Orion back in the late 90s, and we, uh, woo! And we just started uh, when a fellow runner initiated this race. He was doing a run down to Florida, and this was the kickoff. We, uh, the next year we just started dressing up all goofy and it's been like that ever since. Whenever they started this race, we've been here. The first female to cross the finish line was Dot McMahon of Oakland Township. She finished in second place overall with a time of 1720.1. I mean, I'm so thrilled that races are coming back. Uh, we need to really focus on being healthy and, um, you know, jumpstarting our fitness into the new year and um, having a race on January 1st, you know, a nice local race, 10 a.m., not that hard to get up for. Um, to just really jumpstart, you know, our health for the year. Talk about the course and conditions today. I mean, these are great conditions. Uh, it's January 1st in the Midwest, and it's not snowing, and it's, you know, in the upper 30s. Uh, so this is incredible weather. Prior to the start of the race, participants paid tribute to Stan Ford, who, after 41 years of coaching track at Lake Orion High School, has announced his retirement. I've had my turn, and it's time to have somebody else have theirs. So... It's been a, a, a good, rewarding um, career. That's awesome. Even though that's coming to an end, are you going to continue taking part in these types of races? Oh, absolutely. I, uh, running is uh, running was first before I was coaching. So <laughs> I hope to, now it's not how fast can I go, but how long can I keep doing it? <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll be around. <laughs> he's got state titles. He's got county titles. He's got individual state champions. He, uh, he himself is probably the best runner I've ever known in terms of just his ability, his longevity, the stuff he's done. But uh, but he's he moved into Lake Orion and in the early 80s. He's been in the same house ever since for the most part. And and anything that involves Lake Orion running, he is a part of it, whether it's the team, whether it's the races here. And so uh, so he decided that it was it was time to uh, uh, to retire. It, uh, it, he's, he's leaving a huge, enormous hole to be filled. Um, for the team as well, I'm assuming he's going to be sticking around and still playing a pretty big role in the community. But, but, uh, but yeah, he's been he's been very special to the to to everyone involved. Proceeds raised from registration fees will go to the Lake Orion DDA, who will begin the process of renovating Children's Park in 2022. And finally, the a Orion Area Chamber of Commerce began 2022 by hosting their first ribbon cutting ceremony of the new year to welcome a new business. On Thursday, January 20th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce gathered on Baldwin Road, just south of Maybe, to celebrate the official grand opening of Lulu's Boutique. Okay, you guys ready? Right. Sure. One, two, three. Well, it's always been a dream of mine to open a boutique since I was little. Um, I started online back in March of 2021, and then back in September of 21, I decided that I was going to make it a full-time um, job. Lulu is the nickname given to Lonnie Crow by her sister, and like most businesses, the store had to overcome numerous challenges to get to this day. She found this location on Baldwin not too far from her home and opened the doors to the public in mid-December. She told us what visitors can expect when shopping at the boutique. Well, smiling faces behind the desk always, but you're going to find a variety of styles um, from sizes small to all the way up to 3XL. We have shoes, accessories, just a lot of fun stuff for women to um, look around and shop. And then we have a special section in the back that is shop local. It's all Michigan small businesses and artists that sell their items here in the store. Ribbon cutting ceremonies like this one is just one of the many perks of joining the Chamber of Commerce. It was amazing. I can't say it enough. I can't thank them enough for 
bringing everybody in here together, letting them know I'm here, and just celebrating a new business in the community. I assume you're a member of the chamber. Why did you decide to, to become a member? What, is, what does the chamber offer you as a business? As a business, um, networking, I mean, that's a huge part of it, is getting to know your neighbors, getting to know um, what's going on in the community around you, meeting other business members. Um, I wanted to be a part of the whole community, not just, you know, just the retail side of it. I wanted to be a part of the big picture, so I wanted to join, and so far it's been amazing. They help you um, network with other people. It's just, it's a, it's a little family. Everything you see in store is also available online, and free shipping is offered as well. For more information, visit shoplulusboutique.com. You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok. I'll probably have to check that out. And with that, we'll wrap up our first newscast of 2022. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.